Hi everyone, my name is Molly McCarroll and today I'm going to introduce to you and kind of talk you through using um, one of the financial aid tools on our Get to College website. And this one specifically is the Expected Family Contribution Calculator, okay? And so what this tool can do is really help you get an early start on the financial aid process by using your expected family contribution and using this calculator. And basically this tool can kind of help you understand what a college might expect for you as a student or for your family to contribute to the cost of college. And that can kind of help you in the process of figuring out, hey, you know, how much money will we have to put forward? What scholarships do I maybe need to look at as a student? Um, and so that kind of gives you a plan on kind of how to prepare for college and pay for it. Um, now, this is kind of only an approximate um, expected family contribution for you um, because this is calculated um, federally for the expected family contribution when you file your FAFSA. Um, and so when you're starting that college process, you'll eventually file your FAFSA and that is kind of what they use um, to determine how much your family might have to pay towards college, okay? So let's start on the website. When you're here, you're gonna go to student and families and you'll go down to calculators. You'll see three different types and the one that we're gonna choose is EFC calculator. So we'll click here. And I just kind of want to walk you through what this is going to look like, okay? And we know that um, the FAFSA and what that looks at, the uh, free application for federal student aid, they're looking at parent tax information, okay? So if you're a student who is filling out this EFC calculator, you may want to work on this with a parent because it is going to ask about some parent income information. Now we are using right now the 2021 and 2022 school year information. So that means that when it starts to ask about financial information, it's going to ask for 2019 taxes. So I'm just going to basically do this as um, us looking at a student in the state of Mississippi. Okay, so you'll kind of see that as you go through this, it's going to ask these questions for you. Your state of residence, number and household. We're just going to say maybe there are four in the household. That would be maybe two parents, two students, right? And then children in college, let's just say there will be one in the household that'll be in college. All right, now this you can see is gonna be the parent's contribution, okay? So this is asking for parent information, okay? So if you're a student who has, you know, two parents in the household, let's say we're gonna be looking at that right now. So it's gonna ask for the age of the oldest parent, let's just say 53. And then their adjusted gross income. So that's gonna be that income combined, right? So we're gonna just say today, 65,000, all right? And then when we go from there, it's gonna ask about income tax paid. Now, these little um, information, little toggles right here are gonna be super helpful for you because you can click on this and you can see what it's looking for. Um, and so right here, it's asking for a certain line on the 1040 tax return. So like I said, if you're a student doing this, you may want to have that parent's help so that you can kind of look to see on their tax return what that looks like. But if you're a parent doing this, this should be easy to find for you. Income tax paid, let's say it is $4,000. And then, um, of course, we're going to divide the income based on parent one income and parent two, their wages, salaries, and tips, okay? So let's say we're gonna do 46,500 for parent one. And then for parent two, we're just gonna do the difference. Okay, so of course this would be all laid out on the 1040 tax return, but right now we're just kind of showing an example. 65,000, 46,500, 18,500. Income and benefits. This is gonna basically ask if you know, maybe there are um, workers' compensation or disability benefits or child support that a parent pays or receives. That's where that information would go. And then cash and investments, okay? This could be um, what's included in a parent's checking or savings plans or accounts. Um, maybe there's a college savings plan or maybe there are other types of investments here, but it gives you a really clear picture of what you would need to include here, okay? So you're not including the home you live in, retirement accounts, value of life insurances, okay? So let's just say 
for checking and savings account we're gonna put $3,000 here. All right, and then um, we're gonna say that a parent doesn't own a business and um, there are no scholarships or grants or anything that are reported in the income. Okay, we're gonna continue. Now, this is where I would ask about a student's contribution. Okay, so if um, a student did work in 2019, you would do the same thing here. If they had to file a tax return, you're putting the information here for the student. So in this scenario, we're gonna say the student did not work in 2019. So we're gonna put zero here for that information. And then let's say for cash and investments, let's say the student has 500 in savings. Okay. All right. So then what it will do is it'll give you an expected family contribution. And so basically you can see for this specific family, $4,787 is the expected family contribution. And you could even click here to see how is your expected family contribution used by a college. The difference between the cost of college and the EFC determines the student's eligibility for need-based financial aid. Um, and so this just kind of gives you a picture of, of what the, the FAFSA and what the college is kind of looking at for uh, family contribution when it comes to college. And so when you see these kind of numbers and see how much your EFC is when you're filing FAFSA, it gives you a really good idea of, of what you really need to look for um, beyond that when it comes to other grant opportunities, maybe through Mississippi Financial Aid or scholarships from the college. And so this tool can be very helpful for you as you go through that process of really trying to plan, prepare, and pay for college.